Today we are going to the Royal Palace. We're at the Royal Palace Park right now. As you can see, there are pigeons, man. There are pigeons everywhere. Some guy approached us with some feed. Yeah, it's sort of like that uh, mosque in Turkey. And maybe that's his job. It's a cool job, man. If you're just feeding uh, or getting tourists to buy feed for pigeons, right on. All right, enough of the pigeons. We're gonna go inside the Royal Palace. We're gonna explore the whole area. There's a bunch of uh, different buildings. There's a silver pagoda. It's like a temple of sorts. So there's lots to see. Let's go and explore. So we just talked to uh, one of the locals. Uh, there's tour people no matter where you go. Uh, they're looking for foreigners to bring them to different places. He had all kinds of little places he could bring you. He's telling me that uh, some of this is closed. That's okay. Uh, we're going to be walking around. We'll see what's open. And man, you can see all the buildings from the outside. And they are pretty cool. The park is immaculately groomed. Some pretty interesting uh, shapes they put into these hedges here. Look at that. Huh. wonder what the point of that is. Is this real? No, it's fake. That's why. Hmm, interesting. And there's a tree with some white on the bottom and a bunch of people just hanging out. Well, it's a shade, right? You gotta keep cool in the shade. So if you stand still and you're a foreigner, chances are you're gonna be approached by someone offering you a tour of some kind. Uh, they're just trying to make a living. Uh, no clue how much those cost. I didn't ask, because that's not what we're here for. There's some other cool things around this area and they're offering you like one hour and go around and see a bunch of things. So the palace opens at two and that's what we're gonna do. We're going to hang out, eat some food and then come back at two. Waiting for the palace to open, stop that box office. Got myself my first juicy IPA since we left Canada, so happy. We're gonna be having a stout as well, a little bit of food here. Uh, we're actually going to a brew pub tomorrow and that'll be a separate video, so this is awesome. Two brew, brew pubs, two days in a row. Cool. Hey, how's the beer, Aaron? Welcome to the dark side. Whoa. I'll finish the beer, time to go to the palace. On our way back to the palace, they've got these gates up and you gotta go around. You gotta remember to uh, put some things on your legs. You can't go in there without uh, leg coverings. No big deal, I've got them. Uh, they for sure sell them. Uh, that's what I've been told, so I'm gonna clarify that in just a second. We're gonna find out. Do they sell things to cover your legs? Because it's important in Buddhism to have covered legs when going inside temples and so forth. So stay tuned, you're gonna find out. We are here going in and it's time to see if that's the case. Anyways, we're going in no matter what, we're gonna get what we need so that we can visit. About to buy my tickets to go in. I've got my pants on. Those are the same pants I bought at the Royal Palace in Thailand. They say the kids are okay. Let's see. It's 10 bucks to go in. Six are all free of charge. Oh, hello. Buying our tickets right now. It's 10 bucks each, so it's not bad at all. It's okay for kids not to have uh, things over their legs, just like all the other temples. Now, be aware, outside, you're gonna be told by people the palace is closed, kids need stuff on their legs, all kinds of crap, so that they can sell you a tour, a ticket, whatever. And be careful, because you don't need to do that. It's not even the case at all. You buy the tickets and it's different for every single person. All right, I'm about to give in my tickets. Wonderful, thank you. Akun. All right, I'm going in. Oh, and I've got a, I got a map so I could see the whole grounds. Here we go. We brought our friend Ella the elephant and she's coming to the Grand Palace too. Cool. All right, so the complex is really big. There's several buildings to visit. It's not gonna be quick. It's gonna be a really long tour. Uh, this video is not gonna be that long, but I'm gonna show all the key things. And yeah, it's gonna be super, super fun. All right, let's go look around. That is absolutely spectacular. Look at that palace. And you're definitely going to see tourists with all their pictures and selfies. That's just the way it goes. All right, let's go inside the grand building. All right, we're going in here. There's no photography. It says 
Uh, please keep tidy, please keep silent, please don't touch wall and columns, please don't take picture inside, okay? So this is the building, but I have to shut the camera off and I'll tell you what it looks like when I come out. Okay, I can't go inside, but I can get a little explanation because this is meant for the, His Majesty, the King of Cambodia, and he explained it to me, so I appreciate it. Tell me again what you said. Uh, the inside is exclusive to His Majesty the King for many occasions, including the uh, traditional ceremony. Also, when he had an audience with uh, the ambassador from other countries. Excellent. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I won't show it because it's against the rules, but I got a great explanation. So thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. One of the things I neglected to show is the seven headed dragon at the bottom. And I'm going to show that it's always on the stairwell up to the top. It's like a protecting dragon, just like the demons. Seven headed dragon at the bottom to protect the temple. Okay. We've got a few more buildings to see wow so immaculate so well kept yeah it would be cool to go in there but we can't more of these like layered shrub bushes things and this like totally looks fake but it's not it's it's like some weird i don't know rubbery kind of feel no clue what that is. I, I couldn't tell you. It's not like, you know, uh, the, the times, types of hedges you have in Canada that people manicure. And these here, it looks really fake and we're like debating, is that real or is that fake? Well, they're definitely like layers stacked on top of each other. Not sure what kind of manicure they're using to make this, but it's really, really different. Just like in Wat Phnom Penh, or Wat Phnom Don Pen, there's a little uh, sign that shows you what it is. This is saying it's Strebulus Asper Lure. So I'm gonna look into this because it's got such a weird, like plastically, plasticky rubber feel. And uh, yeah, I would say that's fake, but from here it looks like, is that fake? I don't know, it looks kind of real from here, but it, it just, it feels so bloody weird. Anyway, so there's, you can't go down here. There's gates over here. This is another prohibited area. You can't go over that way, but there's a really cool uh, pavilion, pagoda. Let's show it here in the video. Yeah, absolutely grand. And it's got all the same features uh, or similarities to that of a Thai temple. And why not? They're neighbors, right? And they're both Buddhist countries. There's all these little uh, outbuildings more of these interesting layered shrubs and lots of immaculate walkways. So let's go over here and check out some of this way. Can go on the other side of the main huge temple here. And let's go to the back and check this out. So the King of Cambodia frequents this area. Man, he doesn't even frequent it. He lives here. This is his residence, right? but it's open every day. Is he here all the time? I don't know the answer to that. I doubt it. I mean, there's lots of uh, uh, money to be had by having tourists come in here. And of course, there's a little bit of that construction and these cool looking uh, shrub things and an interesting tree here in the middle. No clue what this is. That is far out. I gotta go close because I'm a tree lover. It's like a bunch of roots and yeah, small stalks going up and it's even winding around. Yeah, here we go. Ficus car carissa morase. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to look back in these videos and check these things out to know for myself. Ah, some more seven headed dragons, more gates, can't go over here and some more construction over here. Now uh, this place looks like it needs a little bit of work from the front, but it is grand. What a building. All right, let's go over here and check this out. Now that looks cool. Those look like those shrubs are like in the wall. 
going to have to feel that and see if it's actually, uh, yeah, alive or not. I totally fell for this. This is like, whoop, it's a, uh, yeah, it's like a mural. <laughs> it's not even real. But it sure looks from, from afar, it looks like it's real. A little bit closer to the construction here. So one of the buildings is the Silver Pagoda. Not sure which one it is. That thing I would consider silver, is that it? Hmm, not sure. We're gonna find out. Oh, it might be over there. There's a gate over there. Another uh, safety gate, you can't go up there. We'll mine the safety gates. And some shrubbery, so forth. All right, let's go through here. There's a big map of the uh, Royal Palace there. Silver Pagoda's that way. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. We go through this gate here. Man, that's elaborate. Very metal. And there's an echo over here. Wow. So let's take a quick peek over here. You can go up here. Otherwise, there'd be gates. And I'm going to go up. Mindful of where my shoes might have to come off. All these praying Buddhas all the way around. They're at like every corner here. So I'll walk along the uh, lower level. Oh, cool. We gotta go down there next. There's like a whole story to be told. We saw that in the uh, palace in Thailand. And then this is, wow, the art is amazing. Walk around in a circle here. Super cool. Look how much more is here. The whole area here in the Royal Palace is huge. So many buildings. Oh, and there's a fella praying there. I'm gonna see if I can go up and go inside. Okay, I'm inside now. There's a sitting bull or cow here. And these look like texts actually. I believe these are written material all wrapped up all the way around. There's a fella, well he's on his phone, but he's taking refuge here in some which way. There's a little bit to read on this side. That looks like some really old script there. So, oh, I do see a year, 2079. So they use a different calendar uh, than, than we use. So I'm not sure exactly which year that is compared to ours. There's a little bit more of that. And there it is, the centerpiece. And there's a little place where you can donate a bit of money. All right, let's go out and check out the little bit more of the place. Okay, just leaving that area here. Check that out. Let's go down and check out the mural there. It's so elaborate. It really caught my eye as soon as I saw it. So it tells a story. And the one in Thailand has like little areas that you can, I think there's QR codes you can scan and it tells you a little more. I'm gonna go pretty close so you can see. Now it's a little worn, but I'm gonna guess it's pretty old. And there's like an entire story to be told here. Of course, I'm just guessing, but I'd be shocked if it wasn't the case. And it's through the times and it goes all the way down there. Exactly the same as the palace in Thailand. But this has got a wider walk area. It's a little more breezy, maybe because of the day, but wow, super awesome. This is like definitely one of the coolest features in my opinion. Okay, walking along a little more. Again, there's like a little bit that they need to touch up but the place is constantly under construction. I'm sure that that's part of the, uh, the whole idea is to make everything perfect and it's an ongoing thing. I mean, the place is so huge, there's no way you can keep this like totally together. Oh, look at this, this is interesting. Everything's all demolished. Huh. Maybe this is just things that broke and they're gonna piece back together. Super, super interesting. I guess it's just a safe spot for all this stuff. I'm gonna touch it and see. 
Oh, it's all concrete. Huh, all right. You can actually hear the construction in the background. Oh, and it wraps around, I didn't notice that. All right, let's wrap around here. I'm gonna take a quick peek, peek up here before I walk around the corner. Okay, far in the corner here, everything's kind of like tarnished. I'd say it's really moist just because of where it meets here. But I'm sure, like I said, that they're gonna restore this. And you wanna be careful because it's so intricate. Like when you go up to the places that aren't all uh, falling apart, there's uh, some distinct story and some very intricate art that needs to be preserved. There's even some bastard who's uh, carved in there, so shame on you, don't do that. This is meant to be uh, preserved and loved by everybody and no one should ever do things like that. All right, it actually uh, ends over here, but it's got a full story. I wonder if this is actually the end of the story over here. It might be. All right, let's go back into the courtyard now. We didn't get to the silver pagoda yet, which we will. Oh, look at all the guys up there. Ah, and there's like some signs saying what they're doing, but there's, I'm counting like at least six people up there doing the construction. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if they're artists or what, but they may have to be because that's really intricate. All right, we're gonna go to the building in the background there and check that out next. So I was wrong, it doesn't end. There's more of the mural story just on the other side here. And this is, oh, it's still really intact. There's a little bit of wear over here, but really, really nice right here. There's, again, I wish there were some QR codes or something, some plaques with a little bit of the story. I mean, I can't imagine how old this is, but it's really worn all the way down there. And it does wrap around. So we're gonna walk this and then seek out that silver pagoda, the one I said was in the background there and check out what's inside. There's a lot of little buildings and then these like towers, like the one you can see there. So let's go around here a little bit more. A lot of more wear. Okay, so they've kind of like put some gray paint, I guess to stop the uh, molding or whatever was happening. There's some scaffolding. So as I suspected, they are working on it. Oh, I'm gonna step down because everything's kind of worn out over that way. Just to show another tree with a card on it showing you what it is. Plumeria ruba el apo sign a se. Yeah, again, no clue what that is. It's another one of these interesting, it's interestingly carved. Uh, yeah, that's real, but it's dry, dry, dry. I think it might need a little water. Strebulus, or Strebulus Asperlure Morase. Again, something else I don't know. And this continues on all the way down there. I won't go down this way because it is kind of worn and you're not really getting much of the story or anything like that. And there's quite a few outbuildings like this one over here. So let's go over here instead and see if we can go inside, take our shoes off. Just want to show this quick before I go in. Wow, amazing. All right, let's go up here, shoes off. Cool, all carved in wood. Amazing. Always a place to, it says contribution, to donate. Look at that. And they're all carved. This is wood. Oh, and that's probably a donor's list, an old one. And there's some text. Yeah, so that's really normal. They're, they're like long, written on like bamboo paper. 
Now this looks really weird. Is it a mausoleum? It says no touching, don't touch this. So we're not gonna touch this. Oh, this is a footprint. You can see the toes. That's a big foot. And a bunch more images of the Buddha, statues of the Buddha over here. And you can't go beyond there. You can go on the other side. Uh, this is really cool. One of the things that comes to mind, and I could be very wrong about this, is, is this one of those temples or places where you bring the idols after someone's died because that's usually what they do is they uh, collect them in a spot. They give you a place in temple areas and you can bring your uh, loved one's statues so that they've got a place to go after the loved one passes. Okay, just leaving that area. Man, it's hot. I'm sweating like crazy. Finally going to go to this big temple area in the middle. I am guessing this is the Silver Pagoda. It could be. I don't know. There's a lot of people going in there. And I think the grounds end just beyond here. So this is definitely where we're going next. So you're going to see these boxes all over the place. Contribution. That's very normal. All temples have that. Throw some money in there. Help them uh, keep it, maintain it. Inside here, there is a ah, really old Buddha. Wow, look at that. All right, we're going up the stairs over here. There's all that construction over there. Man, I, am I ever glad I bought those pants? They've come in handy. They were like eight bucks or something like that. Canadian, I forget. They weren't a lot, but I've worn them a bunch of times now. Totally worth it. Oh, there's some people sitting around here. Let's see if we can get inside here. I'm not sure if this, oh, it's a no picture area. You go in this side. So you have to shut the camera off. There's like a side door so you can go off to the side. You can kind of cool down inside there. And you can see more of the uh, like altars, I want to call them, kind of minarets that come off. But this is the inside. You're not allowed to uh, video in there, but you, you see a little bit from the, uh, the camera here. Uh, but all in all, it's like a no video place, no, no pictures or anything like that. Okay, so inside there's like all kinds of historical artifacts, stuff like that. There's like, uh, there's Buddhas with their heads cut off, done by the uh, regime that killed a lot of the Cambodians back in the 70s, the Khmer Rouge. Uh, I don't like talking about that, first of all, because I'm definitely not an expert and it's absolutely sad. It's, it was awful. When you're in Cambodia, it's hard to see like a lot of really old people. Now, you might not know this, but I'm an old guy, but there's a lot of people a lot older than I am. They're all like my age or younger, and that really sucks. So yeah, there's some things in there that are like this, like that, but it was really cool to go in anyway. Uh, yeah, really amazing. All right, let's go somewhere else and finish up the tour. All right, we have seen a lot of the palace the Silver Pagoda, which is this building here. And all this is blocked off. You can see it from the outside, it's amazing. The exit is just up ahead and we're about to go. This is one of the last places we can check out before we go. Look at all this. The girls really need to cool down. It's super, super hot here. Again, there's money. There's some candies as offering and Buddhas and a really cool uh, picture in the background there. Oh, and there's actually cats in this one. I'll show them real quick here. There's always a temple cat or dog. Okay, what a cool experience. Royal Palace in Cambodia. Well, in Phnom Penh to be specific. Exits right here. Let's go out this way. All right, we're right at the end of the tour of the Royal Palace here in Phnom Penh. Super, super cool. 10 bucks per person. Kids under six are free. Look at that behind me. The statues and all the cool things to see never end. All right, thanks a lot for watching once again. Peace, take care.